So I've recently gotten back into building model kits and I'm really enjoying it and I've decided I want to step it up a little bit and get an airbrush. Can any of you guys recommend a good quality beginner airbrush or an airbrush and compressor set? Or even for that matter, I'm wanting to upgrade from my cheap Chinese airbrush. Can anybody recommend which way to go? These are common questions you will see with great frequency on the model kit forums and in model making groups on Facebook. It's a perfectly valid question. The problem with it is, it is always followed with a barrage of answers. Some of which are helpful, some of which are not helpful. And hopefully this video is going to kind of demystify the whole thing a little bit for somebody who's totally new to airbrushes and really doesn't know what to look for. We're looking at what would constitute a basic starter airbrushing set that you might get from eBay or Amazon or possibly even a special offer in your local supermarket Aldi for example are doing something very similar at the time of filming of this video. That's in the UK, I don't know about uh, other countries. And we're going to move the airbrush out of the way just for the moment and first of all we're going to be focusing on compressors and we're going to be talking a little bit about what you would choose regarding a compressor and from the outset you need to start thinking about the potential of long-term use but the AS18 which is this compressor here little one-sixth horsepower oilless compressor has a piston that moves up and down in here driven by an electric motor in here which forces air through the regulator here and through the air hose if I spin that around you can see we've got a regulator there with a dial on the top. You lift up and rotate that for less air that way and rotate it clockwise and you'll feel that tightening up. And it's tightening up because inside of here is a spring and a little diaphragm. And the more you tighten it clockwise, the higher the pressure will go. And this will pump up to about 50 PSI, which is more than you will ever need for an airbrush. These are more than adequate. I would say from the outset, do not get anything lesser than one of these and avoid compressors that you will see in kits that look like these. Consider this your basic entry level compressor for airbrush use. It's the AS18 1 6th horsepower compressor. This will drive any airbrush that you are likely to use for painting model kits. The only time I would say that this may not be adequate and you should consider one with a tank as a starter set would be if you live in an area of very high humidity or you commonly paint huge kits and spray for long protracted periods of time. And this is because the longer you spray, the more heat builds up, the more, uh, the more friction is generated, the more heat builds up, the more condensation is generated. Your filter here will only remove so much before the heat overcomes it and starts pushing moisture through your air hose here, into your airbrush, out with your paint and ruining your paint job on your model. So if that's a concern, look at getting one with a tank to start with avoiding one of these. If that's not a concern, if you live in uh, even the UK, which is quite humid generally anyway, quite high humidity in a lot of places, but if you if you live somewhere that's, uh, that's not excessively humid and you're not painting enormous kits and you're not going to be spraying for an hour at a time or more, continuously non-stop this is, then this will be more than adequate. This will do the job just fine and don't let anyone in fool you into thinking otherwise. You will hear people say things like, oh, get one with a tank because you get pulsing and this will, you know, this will avoid the pulsing and pulsing is a real problem. And that's really not the case. When you're spraying with an airbrush, um, consider here, you've got a piston, which is so round and about that kind of depth. You're pushing with each stroke of the piston, you're pushing quite a huge chunk of air relatively speaking, through into a narrow bore uh, air hose. It's coming through the air hose into your airbrush, which has got an even narrower bore air inlet and channel to the tip. So 
In the grand scheme of things, you're not pushing enough airflow through to notice, to actively notice pulsing and for it to be a problem spraying your model. In addition, if you get the longest air hose that you can get, and they do typically come shipped with a very long air hose anyway, so if you get the longest air hose that you can get, the air hose itself will act as a sort of air reservoir and it will hold all that air in between here and here, which is connected to your airbrush. And that will act as an air reservoir, which will help to level out any pulsation. And unless you're shoving through 50 PSI on a 0.6 or 0.7 millimeter nozzle, you are not going to have noticed the pulsing. So don't let that put you off. So these are great compressors. I had one of these when I first started model kit airbrushing and used it solidly for five years. Go right ahead and get yourself one of these if you don't need anything bigger. Just before we move on and look at another compressor with the uh, air tank, I just want to demonstrate the typical volume you'll get from one of these. These, these are usually advertised as silent air compressors. They are most certainly not silent. However, in comparison to a workshop compressor, they are very, very quiet indeed. But it's something else to consider if you are airbrushing in your family home and you're going to be wanting to airbrush at night when your family is uh, typically sleeping, for example, you may want to have a rough idea of what these sound like. So I'm just going to switch this on, give you an idea of the sound. I know it's always hard to, to gauge over video, but this will give you a bit of an idea um, of what it will sound like. And as mentioned previously, now that's built up to 30 PSI we've got that set at, that will stay there until I press the button. at which point it will start pumping again once the air has started to come out of the hose up through here and through the airbrush. To demonstrate what I mean about the pulsing, I'm going to put some isopropyl alcohol into the paint bowl. This is set to 30 PSI, which is normally the highest that you would ever go with regards to spraying uh, model kits. And hopefully, I'm hoping this is going to be visible on here, but I'm going to press down on the plunger, which will give me air like so, and then pull back, which will start the paint flowing. I'm going to open this wide and you'll see the pattern. Now, if the pulsing was evident, you would see it going pst, 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 pst. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And you tell me if you noticed, if you saw any noticeable pulse in there. That's a 0.3 millimeter nozzle and, uh, and 30 PSI. And I'd be very, very surprised if you did. So that's the AS18 air compressor. We're now going to take a look at a, uh, a similar air compressor, but with a tank. What we're looking at right here is an AS196. It is exactly the same compressor but two of them it's it's the same it's doubled up you've got two pistons so it pumps for the same amount of cycles it's pumping twice the amount of air underneath it is an air tank which i think is about three liters in size off the top of my head it has a safety release valve connected to the air tank here it has the same moisture trap and regulator with gauge and then if we spin it around it is also heavier which goes without saying you um the only other noticeable difference on the outside is this pipe here because what's happening is air is being sucked in through the air inlets through the one-way valves, it's being forced up and it's coming out of the outlets which are here and here. It's being forced through these, down here through this little unit which is a one-way valve with a check valve in it. It pushes air past that way and it won't allow air back up that way. So it's pushing it into the tank, holding it in the tank. Underneath you have a knurled brass screw with an o-ring at the end and a pinhole 
and this allows the escape of air. This should be opened and left removed at the end of every single session because this drains any remaining air from the tank and prevents condensation from collecting and the tank rusting internally which will happen if you leave it and don't drain this. Some people leave that fastened up and they only take that out once in a blue moon and they're usually rewarded by big spurts of brown muddy rusty water because um, the tank's beginning to corrode internally. So this compressor, the AS196, the one that you just saw, the AS18 and the AS186, which is exactly the same, but with one piston less. So if you imagine this one without that, that's an AS186, that's 196. So 18, 186, 196. They're the numbers that you need to remember for these compressors. You will find compressors sold by Badger, sold by Iwata, and sold by other manufacturers, which are these in fancy metal shrouds, typically. Just to give you an example of, um, of the noise of this one, it's actually, despite it having two pistons, it's not dissimilar to the others. So as I said, not silent, but they're really not noisy. And provided you sit it on something to help dampen the vibration further, they have these rubber feet, but they do jiggle a bit. And I sit mine on a block of styrofoam, which really helps quieten it. It's sat on the floor on a block of styrofoam, and that really helps quieten the vibrations even more. But I'm just going to switch this on and, uh, and give you an idea, and you'll see that it's not dissimilar to the AS18. So that's the air tank full. Obviously I've cut this because uh, you don't want to be sat there listening to this chug away. So uh, I cut that from, from the point where I switched it on. Um, but that's the air tank full and the relief valve there will blow out any excess air that's still trapped up here and hasn't gone down here. And that's where the valve on the tank has said, the tank's now full, it's, it's, it's got as much air in as it can physically hold. This stops pumping, that goes pshh and you're ready to go. So I'm just going to attach an airbrush. You'll notice that the hose is exactly the same. The main difference is I have this little doohickey attached to my airbrush. This one's my Badger um, Velocity, Renegade Velocity. And I have this little doohickey attached to the airline, which is an inline water trap. It's exactly like this, but smaller and fits underneath your airbrush. This gives you an additional filter to trap water and stop water going through this very, very fine filter up here into your airbrush. The quick release adapters are fantastic. They are not essential, but for quickly clipping and unclipping, for filling with paint, for cleaning, that kind of thing, they're brilliant. They're very, very cheap off eBay, uh, two or three pound for a set, uh, for a, a, a pair of uh, for the bottom bit and the top bit and the inline water trap maybe about five or something like that well worth it for an extra safety feature but the quick release connectors simply snap in snap out if you've ever used any air tools on a workshop compressor you'll know exactly the kind of thing i'm talking about but as you can see here this is spraying at 30 psi I'm just going to switch that off manually but as you saw there that allows a great amount of spraying before the tank says I'm starting to get empty and the compressor kicks in and starts filling it again. So that's the benefit of a tanked compressor. That's compressors we're now going to move on and take a look at airbrushes. What airbrush would I recommend for somebody who was wanting to start to learn airbrushing model kits? Gravity feed dual action 0.3 millimeter needle and nozzle combination. That's all you need to know. I'm not going to recommend a specific brand or talk about anything along those lines at this point in time. But all you need to know for the moment is your beginner airbrush ideally needs to be a gravity feed dual, uh, dual action with a 0.3 millimeter needle and nozzle. 
single action airbrushes don't waste your time uh, anything with a propellant can don't waste your time so we'll assume that you've already decided on your compressor whether it's the AS18, the AS186, the AS196 or you already have a, a workshop compressor that you can use so now we're just looking specifically at the airbrush single action airbrushes are useful for one thing and one thing only with respect to model making and that is hosing on a reasonably large quantity of paint onto a large piece of plastic so we're talking a big model kit uh, a big car body a big boat or floaty thing a big sci-fi spaceship something like that they can't realistically or easily do fine detail not without an awful lot of fiddling and far far more fiddling and messing around and setting up than it is worth a dual action airbrush however will do both of those things right out of the box without any alterations any twiddling any fiddling nothing dual action airbrush will go from hosing on quantities of paint onto a large piece of plastic to doing tight lines and fine details and little spots of paint for mottling and such so don't waste your time with a single action brush you will buy one you'll use it once or twice you'll want to upgrade to a dual action you'll get a dual action your single action brush will get thrown in a drawer where it will never ever come out again so what's wrong with siphon feed there's not actually anything wrong with siphon feed but from a model kit making perspective gravity feed is better for a few reasons if you're an airbrush artist or if you aspire to be an airbrush artist a siphon feed brush might actually be your best friend for the simple reason that you can buy caps that fit on bottles like creality paint bottles and uh, airbrush art paints acrylic paints specifically so that you can have a rack of these paints with these plug-in tops already fitted and quickly in, in a matter of seconds swap out your paint blow it through to get your new color and and just swap colors on the fly in model kit painting terms this is something that's not necessary in any way shape or form and typically people who do airbrush art are usually in workshops usually using a a better bigger compressor and they can go to the higher pressures required for a siphon feed and that's the other thing that gravity feed has over siphon feed with respect to model making you need a higher pressure to draw the paint up through the siphon straw and out of the nozzle whereas gravity is your friend here gravity is helping that paint come down into the airbrush and out of the nozzle so where you might need 15 psi to spray a paint in a gravity brush you might need 20 to 25 psi to spray that same paint of that same consistency in a siphon feed brush so forget siphon feed airbrushes unless you aspire to airbrush art gravity feed is where it's at for a, for model kit use it's quick and easy to change the colors as you're doing a build so let's say you're doing armor and you want to do a little bit of camo you start with the lightest color you spray your pattern you empty the cup you wipe it out you flush it through with some thinners you put your next color in and off you go at the end of the session you give it a thorough clean as per my video how to clean an airbrush if you have any problem at all at any point during your airbrush use have a look at my video how to troubleshoot airbrush faults um, they are a precision instrument they do have to be treated nicely they have to be cleaned properly which is the first thing that most people don't do when they when they get used to airbrushes and when they first start airbrushing so that is important you need to learn how to clean properly if you learn how to clean properly you will hardly ever if ever have a problem but if you look at my troubleshooting video you'll see the common problems and the common causes you will be able to sort it out very very quickly I have the advantage of having been a mechanic and paint sprayer for several years and I've used during that time lots and lots and lots of spray equipment from the cheapest nastiest Chinese spray guns in backstreet garages up to the best quality Deville Bis and Iwata spray guns and painting all manner of vehicles and various other objects besides so I had a good sort of insight into how a spray gun works and an airbrush 
is nothing but a small spray gun. It all works exactly the same way. So going around here, we've got a cheap Chinese brush, 10 or 15 UK pounds, um, $15 on eBay. We have a Neo for Iwata, which is entry level. This is sub 100 pounds and it is made for Iwata, not by Iwata. I believe it is made by Grex. It is a very nice quality brush indeed. We have a Badger Renegade Velocity. Um, I believe this particular one is a sub 100 pound brush. Very good brush, sprays very well. We have a Harder and Steenbeck Evolution Silver Line. This is, a, um, this is an airbrush that would cost over a hundred pounds. And it is very nice, it's very nicely finished, it's nicely built, it sprays beautifully. And then we have a, an Iwata Revolution CR. This is Iwata's base level that's actually made by Iwata, but is still a, above £100 in costs, pounds sterling. So it's a beautiful brush. If I personally had to choose between all of these airbrushes, if I had to pick one, it would be the Iwata Revolution CR. The reason for that is not what you think it might be. The reason for that is it fits my hand well and I can spray with this for a long, long periods of time and it's incredibly comfortable. Other brushes don't fit quite so well. The second one for fit for me is the Badger up here. It just fits my hand well. The Evolution isn't bad but it doesn't fit quite as well. And then these two sort of, I would say are probably on a par with regards to fit. They will all do the same job, but I would choose this one if I had to choose one out of all of them. These all have different nozzle sizes too, but that is not as important as you might think. Hence the reason I specified a 0.3 millimeter needle nozzle combination. That's a great cover all needle nozzle combination. You will never ever need a 0.2 or smaller needle nozzle combination. You will never need that unless you are doing airbrush art. For model kit airbrushing, 0.3 is the smallest you will ever need to go. 0 0.4, 0 0.5 will, are the kind of things that could be useful for spraying down thick primers and clear coats because you can spray them thicker, giving them a better chance to level and set without running to get a smooth finish. So let's talk countries. My recommendation for an airbrush, if you are in the US, would be an Iwata for Neo, because they are common there and spares are plentiful, or a Badger because they are everywhere and spares are everywhere. They are plentiful and they are cheap. If you are anywhere in Europe, I would recommend an Iwata or a Harder and Steenbeck over a Badger because spares are more readily available. They are everywhere. But any one of these and the Neo as well, um, and even the cheap Chinese one. Spares with a cheap Chinese one are not as easy to come across in a shop but they are available online on eBay and they are very, very cheap. So we're gonna talk now about starting with a cheap Chinese brush. The cheap Chinese dual action airbrush. Don't get one of those. You'll regret it, you'll have nothing but problems. Is this true? Not necessarily. It's a bit of a funny thing because this is a, a tricky subject because the problem with the cheap Chinese made airbrushes is not that they're rubbish and it's not necessarily that they're good but people sort of cry them down because they're cheap Chinese brushes. The problem with them is that there is no consistent quality control. There are numerous vendors, there are numerous names. You're never entirely sure whether you could order two from the same factory uh, or rather from the same vendor that and both could come out of completely different factories. There's no way of telling, there's no consistency as you would get with something like the Neo Free Water which is considered a cheap airbrush. So you can get a good one. This particular one 
is the airbrush that I got with my very, very first AS18 compressor from my eBay set. It came with this brush and it came with a siphon feed brush. I sold the siphon feed brush because I, it never got used. As mentioned previously, it's really not ideally suited for model making. This brush has been used solidly for six, seven years before I treated myself to an Iwata Revolution CR, but just before I got notified that the price rise was happening on these and there hadn't been a price rise on them in a couple of years and I thought I will buy one now before the price rise and up until that point I'd used this one solely and solidly for six to seven years. I still occasionally take this one out of the case and use it to prime or something similar just to keep it sort of in use as it were. It has had, in the time I've had it, it's had um, I've replaced, well, in the time I've had this, I've replaced one needle and two nozzles, all of which were entirely my own fault. The needle, I was cleaning the brush and I had it in this state with the nozzle in, with the needle in. I'd got it sat on the table. I was fishing out the nozzle cap, knocked it off the table, it landed with on the floor, hit the floor like so with the back of the needle, with the back of the needle, sorry. It punched the needle straight up through the nozzle and it split it, it then fell over and it bent the needle tip. Entirely my own fault and I replaced it. The beauty of it is seven pounds sterling buys you a replacement needle and nozzle set. A replacement needle and nozzle set for that, for that, for that, or for that is considerably more expensive. Whichever one you choose, considerably more expensive. So this is one of the bonus points of your cheap Chinese airbrush. eBay, seven pound needle and nozzle set, and at that price you could get yourself a couple so you've got some sitting in your spares waiting. The second nozzle I broke, also my own fault, I was spraying cellulose uh, Alclad, Alclad 2 through the brush and it had, it has or it had rather, a rubber o-ring around the nozzle which helped it to seal in here. I took off the rubber o-ring and I thought I'll see if I can manage to seal it without the rubber nozzle. And I tried and it worked and then I took it apart and cleaned it properly. I put it back together and it wouldn't seal and I tried tightening it up. I over tightened it and it snapped the threads. They are quite fragile in that respect, but it's just a case of, of knowing how much to tighten it. It's kind of like when you're working as a mechanic, you don't use a three quarter drive breaker bar to tighten an eight millimeter nut. And this is the thing with these, with the wrench that's supplied, you tighten it and you literally need finger pressure to tighten the nozzle. Nothing more than that. Anything more than that, if you're actually holding it and pulling it, it's too tight. You literally get it finger tight, put your nozzle on and then just a little smidge, just finger pressure. You're not pushing on it. It's just your finger pressure to get it tight enough. So I replaced the nozzle. It turned out that I was actually able to get the nozzle to seat without a seal, without an O-ring um, on this. So it meant that I could use it to spray cellulose paints through, uh, or cellulose, pri uh, cellulose thinner paints. It does have another O-ring here, which is replaceable, uh, but that's to seal the, the air cap body so that the air doesn't leak out of the sides there. I haven't tried fitting that without to see if it fits. It may be that that works. It does have a Teflon seal back here, which you can see in an older video that I made where I stripped this, this particular brush. And it does have rubber seals down in here. Now, if I was so inclined, I could actually size all of these up and replace them all with Viton, which is solvent resistant. I'm really not that bothered. And when you're spraying a solvent based paint and you're cleaning solvent based paints. The only reason I wanted to remove the one from the nozzle completely is because in my cleaning 
routine, I drop the nozzle into a thinner's bath because the nozzle is the bit that's most likely to get clogged with paint. So it's important that gets dropped, dropped into a solvent bath and it's fully immersed so that it, it basically gets rid of anything, any bits of paint that are clogged in there. So in short, these can be good. The problem is there's no way of knowing. And the other problem, the reason that I wouldn't completely recommend one of these for a novice to airbrushing, somebody who's never picked up an airbrush and used one before, is simply because if you get a bad one, it can be difficult to know if the problems you experience are your technique or the airbrush. If you know airbrushes and you know spraying and you know how they're supposed to behave, it's far, far easier to diagnose whether the problem is yourself or the brush. So I would say if you have somebody that knows airbrushes or if you are confident that you have learnt enough about them, uh, even though you haven't used them yourself, then go ahead and just get yourself a cheap Chinese brush to start with because they're great to start with, great to practice on, cheap for spares. Why spend silly money on something if you decide later on airbrushing isn't for me? That way you can sell on your airbrushing compressor and you're losing very, very little because somebody will go ahead and buy it. You could also go the next route, which is a Sparmax. Now, this particular airbrush is essentially a Sparmax. It's just that Sparmax, as a brand, is the same kind of cheap brush, but with quality control. So they are tested and they're a bit more reliable. So there's nothing wrong with going that route and paying a little bit more, but do not pay more than about £30, £35 maximum for one of these brushes. Because if you're going in that kind of direction, you are as well off paying a bit more and going for something like this. If you get the opportunity, a lot of model shows will have a stand where a vendor will have a range of airbrushes and you can try them. Now that is a great opportunity when you're wanting to choose an airbrush because you can physically pick them up, put them in your hand, hold them, operate the trigger, see how they go. And even if they've got a compressor set up and some inks or paints or what have you, you can, you can even try them. You get a bit of scrap paper, try them out, see how they work. And you might find that one particular brand over another just feels better in your hand. Any of the name brand, and this includes things like uh, Sparmax even, of the cheaper end, Grex and, um, and Pash and what have you. I'm assuming Pash do actually do a double action one. I'm not entirely sure because that's very much an American thing. Uh, but any of the dual actions of a name brand will have that quality control in there that gives you the assurance that it has been checked and tested and quality controlled throughout its manufacture. That's what this might be missing. There you have it. Uh, how to choose an airbrush compressor for a complete newbie, what to look for. And how to choose an airbrush for a complete newbie, what to look for. Go with a name brand if you don't have the confidence in yourself or your own abilities to diagnose a fault and whether that might be yourself your paint or uh, the airbrush itself and go with a cheap one if you do have that confidence or you have somebody that can actually test it for you and tell you whether it's yourself or the airbrush go for a cheap one to save yourself a bit of money once you know that you like airbrushing you can then look at buying a, a better branded model and save this as a spare all the name brand ones all as good as one another as how good it is for you is down to your own experience. If you get an uncomfortable brush, you will paint with it for half an hour and you'll hate it and you'll want to put it down. If you get a comfortable brush, you'll sit there and paint for two or three hours and you'll not even notice and you will love it. And for that reason, you might prefer a Badger over a Harder and Steenbeck or a Harder and Steenbeck over an Iwata or what have you. So that's really all there is to it. The only other thing worth mentioning with any airbrush or any kind of spraying and propellant, use a decent face mask, and I'm not talking about the particulate mask, the dust filters, like you would use when you're sanding. I'm talking a decent 3M filtered face mask and a, a spray booth extract, um, extractor system, or spray in a room where you can open a window 
spray what you need to spray, leave the room and close the door because although you're spraying small quantities of paint, the nasty stuff in paint, and this applies to water-based acrylics as well, a lot of people don't realise, but floating bits of paint, acrylic paint is plastic floating about in the air, you're breathing that in, it's sticking inside your lungs, it's not going anywhere, it doesn't just magically disappear after half an hour. So protect yourself and don't go spraying in rooms where, where if you've got kids and the kids are in and out all the time, that kind of thing. So in a room with good ventilation where you can finish spraying, go out and close the door or use an extractor spray booth system and use a good face mask. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching guys and we will see you in the next video.